I recently saw a woman walking a dog on a leash. Better said, I saw a woman pulling a dog on a leash. The day was hot, brutally. The dog had stopped, totally, and he had plopped belly down in wet grass, swapping the blistering pavement for a cool lawn. The woman tugged and tugged. She would have had more success pulling a sparked semi-truck. The dog's get up and go had got up and gone, so down he went. He's not the last to do so. Maybe you've reached your plopping point over the last few weeks. Blame it on your boss. We need you to take one more Zoom call or your spouse. I'll be up late one more night this week or your parents. I've got one more chore for you to do or your friend. I just need one more favor. The problem, you've handled, tolerated, forgiven, taken until you can have one more, one more in you and you are one tired puppy. And so you plop. <laughs> Who cares what the neighbors thinks? Who cares what the master thinks? Let them yank the leash all they want. I ain't taking one more step. But unlike the dog, you don't plop in the grass. If you're like David's men, you plop down at Brook Besor. Never heard of Brook Besor? Well, you're not alone. And I want to tell you how the story of Brook Besor in the Bible, 1 Samuel chapter 30, to be specific, helps us deal with our own plopping points. If that has absolutely no appeal to you, then I am fine with that. God bless you. You got enough on your mind. You got enough to manage, then you don't need to hear somebody talking about Brooke Besor, although it is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. Let us know how to pray for you. Pop your prayer requests right there on the page, and we'll make sure that somebody, hopefully I, will pray for you. But if you got about 10 minutes to hang around, don't feel bad if you've never heard of Brook Besor. Most people haven't, but more people need to. The Brook Besor narrative deserves shelf space in the library of the worn out, and it speaks tender words to the tired heart. And the reason I'd like for us to look at the story of Brook Besor is to tantalize you to consider being a part of an online Bible study that studies these stories based on the life of King David. Uh, the book is called Facing Your Giants. I wrote it some time ago, and we're offering an online Bible study, and details are right there on the webpage, details and date, and I'd love to have you join up with those. I think we've got 40,000 people who are ready to learn how to face their giants, and I'd love for you to be one of them. Now, this story emerges from the ruins of a place called Ziklag. Here's the context. David and his 600 soldiers had returned from the war front to find devastation. A raiding band of Amalekites had come down upon their village and taken the women and children hostage. And the sorrow of the men mutated into anger, not against the Amalekites, but against David. They blamed him for leading them into battle. He's the one who left the women and children unprotected. He was to blame, so he needed to die, and they started grabbing stones. David tactfully redirected the anger of the men toward the enemy. So they set out in pursuit of the Amalekites. Now keep their weariness in mind. They still bear the trail dust of a long campaign. They haven't entirely extinguished their anger at David. They don't know the Amalekites' hideout or whereabouts. And if they didn't miss their loved ones so much, they might give up. Indeed, 200 do. 200 do. See, the army reaches a brook called Besor and the army dismounted. Soldiers waded in the creek and splashed water on their faces, and they sunk their tired toes in the cool mud. And hearing the command to move on, 400 of them stu stood up, 200 of them chose to stay behind. Now, how tired does one have to be to abandon the hunt for his own family? But they waved them on. Now, folks, the world has its quorum of Brook Besor folks, good people, godly people, but people who are just exhausted, beat up and worn out, and they can't summon the strength. Well, they can't summon the strength to save their own flesh and blood. Society right now, especially, but always, has its share of people who are worn out. So the question is, what do we do with Brook Besor people? Well, here's what David did. David let him stay. He and the remaining 400 fighters resumed the chase, and they found the enemy, and they rescued the families, and they began to celebrate. With victory in the hand, they galloped back to Brook Besor, crested the ridge overlooking the camp, and they saw those 200 men below. 
If you were one of the soldiers who fought, how would you feel about one of the soldiers who stayed? You might say what they said to David. Well, since they didn't go with us, we're not giving them any of the spoil that we've recovered except for their wife and children. A Molotov cocktail of emotions is stirred, lit, handed to David. But here's how he diffused it. Again, this story, if you ever want to read it, is in 1 Samuel chapter 30. He basically said, don't do that after what the Lord has given to us. He protected us. He gave us the enemy. Who's going to listen to what you say? Listen, the share will be the same for the one who stayed with the supplies as for the one who went into battle. All will share alike. That's verses 23 and 24. I love that phrase. They stayed with the supplies as if that had been their job. They asked to guard the supplies. They really had wanted to rest, but David dignified their decision to stay. Now, David did many wonderful deeds in his life. He did some foolish deeds in his life, but his noblest was this rarely discussed deed. He honored the tired soldiers at Brook B. Sword. Someday somebody will read what David did and name their church, the congregation at Brook Besor. Because isn't that what the church is supposed to be? A place for soldiers to recover their strength. If you're listed among them, here's what I hope you know. It's okay to be tired and it's okay to rest. Jesus is your David. He fights when you cannot. He goes where you cannot. He's not angry if you sit. And he invited you, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Brooke Besor blesses rest. Are you weary? Catch your breath. We need your strength. Are you strong? Reserve passing judgment on the tired. Odds are you'll need to plop down yourself at some point. And when you do, Brooke Besor is a good story to know. 